Les of everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are talking tarot and the three most common things new tarot readers struggle with. Or even if you're not that new to reading the tarot, you may still struggle with these because tarot isn't as easy as it's probably made out to be. And it's also not as complicated as it's made out to be at the same time. But before we dive into the topic, I am Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com. I'm the creator of the Confident Tarot Reader course. So that's for you if you want to become a confident tarot reader using your intuition and your knowledge of the cards. It takes you through seven modules of how to read the tarot. And at the end of it, you will be way more confident reading the cards either for yourself or for yourself and others uh, by the time that you've finished with the way that the course is structured because I teach you how to practice reading the cards even if you don't have anybody to read for and that's the hardest part is is practice 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 so there's a link to that in the description field below this video on this channel we talk about tarot we talk about Wicca and witchcraft shadow work and magic so if you're interested in all of those things or even just one or two of those things hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss any videos i also do one-on-ones with tarot coaching as well as mentoring with wicker and witchcraft and i have other online courses as well on the subjects of wicker and witchcraft and shadow work too that you might be interested in so take a look in the description field below this video or go to my website mysterywitchschool.com and have a look at all the things that i offer there okay so when it comes to learning tarot it can be very daunting when i first learned tarot i did what most people do got a deck of cards, came with a book, I bought an extra book and then I went about trying to learn all of the meanings of all of the 78 cards Mem from memory and there's some books that I had were really good at trying to encourage you to find keywords for each card and different exercises that you could do to familiarize yourself with each card which is part of the learning process but very few books could teach me how to read the cards well from an intuitive point of view and also from the point of view how do you read cards when they're together in a spread. The first thing that most new tarot readers struggle with is learning to read the tarot using your intuition and doing it confidently. A lot of tarot cards really can appeal to your imagination, to your intuition and to your ability to be able to think outside the square. They're designed to trigger feelings in us and thoughts in us and we can tune into the meanings of the card if they've been well designed around the meanings of the card. The most common deck that you're going to find out there on tarot is still the Waitsmith deck and it's a very good deck because it's well uh, created. The artwork suits the meanings of the cards and it, there's a lot of symbolism in there and if you allow yourself to connect to the symbolism in the cards and just trust your storytelling ability that's coming from your intuition then you're able to know what the card means without even looking up the meaning in a book. So when it comes to reading the tarot intuitively, look at the pictures. I've got other videos that tell you how to do this and I'll put a link to those in the description field below this video so you can go and watch those. But the real key to reading intuitively is when you first look at a card. So for example, I've got the eight of cups here. And what we see here with this card is a figure walking away from some cups that are arranged in such a way that it looks like there's a missing cup actually. And so this figure is a little hunched over and they're walking away from these cups and they're crossing water and it looks like they're, it's night time as well. So the feeling that you might have simply because of the picture itself, the, the posture of the character, 
is one of oh, something's being something hasn't worked here something's being left behind somebody's maybe given up and abandoning something or it, it just feels like they're turning their back on something and the picture tells you that they're turning their back on something now it may be temporary they may only be turning their back because they're going to find the missing cup and they're going to come back and put it there or they may, may be abandoning the whole thing because it just isn't what they want anymore or it's not working anymore and so they're going to find something else. Those meanings are associated with this card. If you look up a book on tarot on this card, they're meanings that are going to come through. If you look at the keywords of the cards, there's usually lots and lots of them and you can't possibly remember them all. But when you look at the picture on the card and you see what the picture is telling you, then you can start to read the card already as a single card. The same goes for this next example, which is the Six of Pentacles here. You've got somebody who seems to be quite well dressed, uh, handing out coins to two people who look a little impoverished, okay, or quite impoverished. They've also, they're holding scales and you've got a bit of a, a garden in the background. Okay, I haven't got my glasses on, so I can't see exactly what's going on in the background there. But there's a symbols of lushness and fertility and prosperity in the background there. And you can see from the figure that's dishing out the coins that they are reasonably affluent. So just from looking at the, photo, the picture graph here, you can see that somebody is giving to others. Okay, they're giving, but they're giving in a measured way. They're not just giving willy-nilly, they're giving in a measured way. And they're giving to people who look like they need it uh, and are possibly even begging for it. Now there's lots of different innuendos you can see in this card because of the posture. You've got the person who's in the position of financial power um, standing while the others are kneeling. So you've got power play there as well. And you could be either, either character in this card. You could be the one in this position or you could be one of these. And the person that you're reading for could be in either of those positions. So it has a different meanings depending on how you're interpreting the card and how it appears in the spread with other cards. But you can see that this is a card of giving, but it's giving in a measured way. Giving and receiving. And your intuition can then play with that when it comes to where the reading's going and how you're relating that to the question that the querent has given you. So these are ways that you can just tune into the pictures and just start to feel into, you know, what is this saying to me in this instance? What am I noticing about this card? And tune into your intuition that way. It's important to be able to utilize your intuition when you're reading the cards. Even if you think you don't, even if you're somebody who's, who just goes with what you know the meanings of the cards to be, you're still probably using your intuition to put it all together because that's what the intuition does. So don't be afraid to allow yourself to start the reading or start speaking about the cards as, you're, as they're coming across to you in, from an intuitive point of view. The second area that beginners struggle with is putting the two cards together or three cards or four cards together. Or if you're reading a Celtic cross spread, how do you relate all of the cards together and actually get a reading that makes sense? Because you've got different positions of the cards in a lot of spreads and you've got to try and relate the card to the position and then relate that to the question. <laughs> and that can be really tricky because you've got a lot of layers there that you've got to think about. So it isn't an easy thing to do. But if you can see the tarot cards as telling a story and you understand that the positions are telling a story in the spread and you get used to working with a spread, so you don't just work with it once or twice, you get used to working with it, you can start to understand how you can tell a story from the beginning of the spread to the end of the spread. And that will help you learn to read the cards together. You will see that your intuition can pick up that, say this is in the situation uh, position of the Celtic cross, that we've got 
a situation here where somebody's either being given is giving or somebody's receiving but there's something going on here where you're giving or receiving and you can start to feel into what that might mean by understanding the question that's asked and speak about that and talk about that you might find that this is a challenge card so this might be position two of the Celtic cross so this could be the challenge is walking away uh, there's some interesting connections you've got the orange red color on the figure in this card and you've also got an orangey red um, color on the, the standing figure in this card too so there could be even a connection that you might pick up that this person who's giving is actually walking away from something maybe they're walking away from giving maybe they've had enough maybe they're being uh, used and abused or for whatever reason but you can start to look at what you're seeing in the cards pictorially and start to talk about that and see where that goes and what that feels like and connect the two cards together if this p card was in the a past position in a reading you'd be looking at somebody having already walked away from something or at least they were contemplating it in the future they will be possibly walking away from something or they're going to go and find something to bring back just apply the card to the position that it's in and then how it's part of the story a good tarot spread should flow as if it's telling a story and if you find that the spread doesn't flow then you might find that you have to add maybe other positions yourself in the spread or find a different spread so that it helps you tell a story from the beginning through to the end think of it as storytelling and that the combinations are just pictures they're stills in a movie and each still is telling you something about that part of the movie or that part of the story the third thing that tarot readers struggle with is managing other people's expectations because even if you don't want to become a professional tarot reader and do it for income you're probably going to find that you're going to read for family and friends they're probably going to want you to read for them if they know that you read and their expectations may be beyond what tarot really is about tarot is associated with fortune telling of course and that's how it's been in you know the popular culture it's been seen as something that you go to somebody and the tarot reader is going to tell you about your future in some way that you're going to meet so and so and this is going to happen and that's going to happen and all of this sort of thing and whilst the tarot can certainly do divination it can certainly help with those sorts of things it can do so much more than that it can actually help give a person more clarity about their situation so that when it comes to them discerning their own future their own path instead of leaving it up to fate and, and being like a jellyfish in the water the tarot can actually help guide somebody to become more clear about a situation it can help them know that you know the track you're on now is possibly going to lead to this outcome is that the outcome you want it doesn't mean that it's fatalistic it just means that what the tarot is telling you is that these things could possibly happen from this moment which is subject to change too and if that's something you want great if that's something you don't want then you have the ability to change that and the tarot can reveal to you what's going on that you may actually be able to change if you want to change it it can help bring clarity to a situation and i feel that tarot is so much stronger and more useful to us when we do use it to help us understand what might be going on inside our heads what might be going wrong in our life where we might be making mistakes over and over and over again and how we might be able to change the way that we approach things to to do things better that are going to have more success so using co coaching more as a tarot model rather than it being fortune telling how it's been in the past there's nothing wrong with using it to divine the future but there's a lot more it can do and so when you are reading for someone whether it is just family or friends or you're doing it professionally you need to be very clear with them how you read tarot you know what's your style of reading do you do divination 
only or are you more of a coach uh, when it comes to using the tarot cards? Do you prefer to work with the cards as guidance uh, or as clarity? Or do you prefer to use it you know, simply as something that's more fatalistic and fortune telling oriented? Just be clear with the person that you're reading for so that they know <laughs> where you're coming from as a reader and their knowledge of tarot may be very, very limited uh, to the whole fortune telling thing. Just be clear with them. Let people know from the get go. So there's about four different ways that you can become better at reading tarot. And of course, the very first one is regular practice. So practice reading your tarot cards every day. In the Confident Tarot Reader course, I get people to do a spread, a five card spread, three card spread on a daily basis. And even if you run out of questions to ask yourself, uh, do a mock reading. Now, a mock reading isn't necessarily going to reveal anything, but what a mock reading does is it teaches you how to tell stories. And that's the first thing you need to learn to do, tell stories. Learn how the cards work together to tell a story. So you might make up a question. Pretend you've got a, a querent there or a client there and today they're asking the question about how's their job interview going to go? And so you then do a reading and the cards are there. And this could be really tricky because you might get cards coming up in this because it's a mock reading that have nothing to do with finance or appear to not have anything to do with finance or a, a job situation. But you can use the cards to tell a story around this theme and that's where a mock spread comes in. It's about you getting used to telling stories with the cards so that when you come to do a real reading with a real question and the cards are going to be directed at that question specifically because it's a real thing, it'll become easier for you to actually read the cards. You'll find it's easier. When you do get a real question in a real situation, it'll be so much easier to tell the story that the cards are telling you because you've practiced on mock readings, which are actually a little bit harder to do. So if you practice that every day, you will become really good at reading the tarot cards. The second thing is ongoing study. You know, just, um, I know a lot of people who are really into tarot probably have, you know, bookshelves full of tarot books. I have heaps of tarot books. I've given away tarot books. <laughs> I've had to downsize my library uh, to just keep the books that I really like because there's so many tarot books out there and a lot of them pretty much tell you pretty much the same thing and some of them sort of contradict each other here and there. Aim to learn more about the tarot and go deeper with the tarot. So find books that are going to give you angles on the tarot that you haven't looked at before. So rather than books that are just telling you how to read the tarot cards, Find books that might teach you a little bit about their connection to uh, the esoteric uh, practices, to occultism, to history, how the cards, uh, the symbolism in the cards. There's books on symbolism only. There's books that relate the cards to the Kabbalah. There's books that are relating the cards to the court cards, for example, just a book on the court cards, nothing else but the court cards. There are other books that are just on the major arcana, other books that are just on the minor arcana. Just read, try to go deeper with your reading because otherwise you're going to find you're going to get a lot of books that aren't going to really teach you anything new. They're just going to be maybe a different way of showing you what the meanings are but not actually going any deeper with understanding the symbolism on the cards. The third thing is joining tarot communities. So whether that's online, like in Facebook groups, uh, or whether you go to meetup groups that focus on tarot, find other people, other tarot people who are learning tarot to, to read for. You know, if you're in a community, you can read for each other and practice on each other. Uh, find a community, find other like-minded people who are into the tarot. It will help you learn tarot a lot faster that way. And number four, if you're the journaling kind of person, and I know not everybody is, but if you are, keep a tarot journey, journal, I should say, of your journey through tarot because you can look back at tarot readings that you've done to see how accurate they may have been. 
So if you do a tarot reading and you keep documentation of what the cards were that came up and what the the meaning for the cards and what your summary of the reading is, you can go back and look at those later and just see how accurate they were. It also gives you practice in really thinking about the cards too when you're writing about the cards and it'll help you learn the meanings of the cards as well. The more you're writing down the meanings of the cards, which you are doing when you're journaling, the faster it is for you to actually learn the meanings of the cards. And if you're also writing in there your intuition and where you got that idea from, because you might write, you know, well, I saw the, 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 figure, the two figures wearing red and so I, they just felt like they were the same person. <laughs> and write that in there. Because you might get those cards coming up in a, another reading where you don't even notice the, the, red, fig, the red clothing. And, and you don't compare the two because they're not related. And just see how your intuition works. And so that's another way that you can um, learn to read the tarot and trust your intuition as well as learn the meanings of the cards. But if you want help and you want me as your mentor, the Confident Tarot Reader course is there for you. It is something that you can do in your own time. You can ask me questions. Uh, you can send through uh, your readings and uh, get feedback. It is a DIY course though, so you can take as long or as short a time as you want with learning the tarot. Unlike some of my other courses, which I deliberately drip feed to make it to slow people down, this one's in your own time. So it's the Confident Tarot Reader, link in the description field below this video. If you like the video, hit the like button, share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe. I am Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com. Blessed be.